Oh, hi. Didn't see you there. Enjoying this wonderful pizza from Slice on Broadway, the people in Pittsburgh that provide good pizza to podcasters. Hey guys, welcome to the Awesome Cast, the podcast where we uh, talk tech, geeky things, and social media and more with the nerds using this stuff in Pittsburgh, including myself, Michael Sorg at Sorgatron, on the Twitters, uh, right here in the studio in Pittsburgh, PA. With me on the couch, back again, John Chichilla, two weeks in a row. Two weeks in a row. At Chilla on the Twitters. Welcome back. Hey, it's good to be back. It's good to be here every week. Awesome. Because I get pizza. Uh, ch- <laughs> slice on broadway.com um but uh they ate chili i went to open coffee club last friday and we got two uh i brought i brought some people back with me mm-hmm. <laughs> uh these guys we're going to talk about their company here in a moment but right now uh we have uh nicholas farrell he's the coo of who you inc a great alpha lab company i i got to learn about and of course uh chase midler uh ceo of who you i think i got all the letters right right guys <laughs> Yeah, just throw some C's and O's out there, and you're probably going to hit the mark. <laughs> Wait, I got, I got to ask, like, what, what? I'm pretty sure you're just a two person company. Like, like, how do you like, like? I've had this discussion with my small company. It's like, which letters do we give you? You know, is 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 that how that goes? You know, the, the letters are pretty much meaningless, in all honesty. Right. Like, you know, we both do everything, so it's it's an all encompassing <laughs> role. <laughs> Try to leverage every hour in the day, so <laughs> we just need letters to get out to everybody else. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Well, I can't wait to get to uh, uh, what what you guys are doing over there. Uh, but first, gotta take care of some business. Of course, this is the Awesome Cast. You can check out what we're doing here at AwesomeCast.net, including the daily mini Awesome Cast we've been doing lately. Uh, I've been talking about Apple. I've been talking about Sony. I've been talking about uh, you know whatever stories come uh, across my reader uh, daily over there. So you can go that. And there's actually a new feed. Um, it should be live by the time you hear this on iTunes for many awesome casts as well. Just search Sorgatron Media and you'll find all the stuff we're doing over here, uh, tech and otherwise. Um, you can also drop us a line, awesomecast at sorgatronmedia.com. Tweet us at awesomecast and look for us on Facebook, Google+, and then subscribe to us at uh, YouTube, iTunes, Stitcher, all the links over at awesomecast.net. And you can join us live every Tuesday at live.sorgatronmedia.com or live.awesomecast.net at about 6.30 p.m. Eastern or so we get uh, rolling or at least set up you can watch us doing weird stuff for dogs and we had uh, two dogs and a kid while we we're setting up in between shows actually tonight it was it got really interesting so but with that like i said awesome things of the week um uh, nick and nick and chase I, I want, can you tell us a little bit about who you inc yeah sure sure um so yeah who you inc uh we are a pittsburgh startup going through alpha lab right now uh if you're not familiar with alpha lab it is the premier startup accelerator here in Pittsburgh. Uh, highly recommend you check out their page, alphalab.com, or org, I think it is actually. But uh, yeah, so who you? We uh, are a mobile application company uh, working on forming these very tight-knit, small, dynamic social networks. So these networks basically form up around you when you interact with other people that are in the same room as you. The point of doing this is so that you can really interact with those people around you that you don't know. Unlike typical social media that deals with only online things, we're trying to bridge that technology gap and actually interacting in the real life. Yeah, basically, you know, when you when you're out and about and you know potentially meeting people or you know, going, going to social, social events, we we'll finally have to do that. that all help you feel, feel, you know, maybe less awkward, awkward about going out with someone you don't know or you know, carry with someone that really likes that, you know, that, you know, like that, that, you know one, one movie that nobody else about. Um, so, hoping to bridge that gap. <laughs> Sorry, but we had a little <laughs> bit of double. Hey, you guys are in the same room, so I think we're getting a little bit of crosstalk there. So, gotcha. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm right. trying to uh, mute now when uh, the other right. one's talking. <laughs> that's fine. That's fine. Um, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, it's not really interesting because like, we're at Open Coffee Club, and this is like kind of a, a small networking event to get me. You know, you guys in the company and everything and, and whatever else networking goes on there. Um, and, and it seemed really, you know, as we were you know talking about uh, uh, there, but how like, you know, people aren't good at networking, right? They don't know 
I, you know, I go to these things. Like, I, I'm like, okay, who are the companies? Where do I start? And I just talk to the first person who looks lonely, you know, and see where it goes from there. Um, you know, can you talk a little bit more about how, how uh, your application is looking to kind of solve that, that issue? Yeah, so uh, absolutely. Uh, so, yeah, as you said, for me especially, like, you know, I'm a self-proclaimed introvert. So networking is not the, uh, the best thing for me. To, well, it's always great, but I'm mm -hmm. not very talented at it. So right. one of the things I like to know is, who's around me at a given time and like there are obviously certain people that you're trying to look for like you know for for us for example it's you know uh, you know potential investors people who are interested just in like what what are we doing and and everything and uh, you know trying to find those people in a crowd unless they're standing right next to you and they're really self-proclaiming themselves is a very difficult task even if they're wearing a name tag it doesn't necessarily mean anything and then you're awkwardly staring at somebody's chest right so the mm -hmm. idea here is that using Bluetooth low energy, you can really do these little tags on people. And these tags give you this look into seeing the people that are actually in the same room as you. and give you kind of like a little uh, in-depth dive into them. So you match like a face to a name. You can see like what company they're working for, maybe something that they're here for doing for this event right now. So for the Open Coffee Club, I probably would have announced, hey, I'm Who You Inc. CEO Chase Midler. Come talk to me. And then you would have been easily able to find out who I was and what I did. Mm -hmm. Mm. Um, yeah. how, how do you tag yourself? Is it you, do you tag yourself with attributes, or is it more? Is is there a limit to like how how many tags you can have, or is it more just like you were talking about with like a short short intro about yourself, and then you can you can kind of put that face to the name and go from there? So yeah, so the uh, the main view is really like a list of people, and it, the idea is that we want you to quickly be able to get through and just no information about them really quickly, right? So the main screen gives you like a name, a face, a little short information blurb, and then uh, really like a green or red is tell you if this person is e either open to talking or is busy and doesn't want to talk right now. And then if you actually click on them, you can get a deeper dive, and then you can actually see a lot more information to really process down and like get a lot more information if that very first part intrigues you within the networking part. So I'm, I'm, I'm completely interested in this. So I'm going to ask like 8,000 questions. Um, so, so from that, can you like go back and look, say I didn't get to come talk to you, but I wanted to, does it give, can it keep like a log or anything to figure out? Yeah. Like, oh, that's actually one of my favorite features of the, the app there. Um, you know, if you are a more social person and you are an extrovert and you're used to talking to all these people, you know, my issue is I'm really good at remembering people's uh, faces, but terrible at the names. So, with our app, you know, as soon as I meet somebody, I have a good conversation. I can quickly uh, save their profile and add my own personal notes to, you know, the last time I talked to them. That, you know, the next time they're around, the next time they come up, the next time I want to view that profile, I'll have everything I, you know, took a snapshot of right there. That's and again, you know, that that available and busy is, you know, a key feature for me just because every time you talk to somebody, you have that, you know, quick moment where you're you're wondering if you're interrupting something they're doing or not. So now with our app, I'll know right away, like. Hey, this person's busy. I might want to check back later. Or, you know, they're they're available. They're they're open to being approached. So, I'm good to go. Very cool. Very very cool. Can you can you put links in your in your in your um, profile or whatnot where I could like give a link to my website? Or you were talking about like you can tap on the person and it kind of gives you a more in depth piece of information. Can I include like? Um, like my LinkedIn profile or if I have my own website or or anything like so, that. So right now well, we want to make sure uh, that we're oh. or I'll go, I guess, yeah. So uh, <laughs> yeah. so right now what we're really doing is we're actually beta testing the app out. So we're trying to get, you know, a lot of user feedback to see like what are all the attributes and everything that people want to use. So right now, yeah, you can you can put that in like this little short blurb area, but there is a dedicated space to it until we really find out, you know, what really are the best features to add to allow people to really connect in the mm -hmm. best way possible. So yes, it's a potential, but currently it's not actually implemented. Cool. Yeah, we're trying to give our users what they what they really want right now and you know make sure we're not wasting time on things that they don't need yet. So uh, that's one of those that's kind of in the queue to be tested. Mm -hmm. um, and then along with that we want to make sure that you know as we're adding these features we don't we want to make sure that you know the last thing we want is a big group of people all standing around in a group and they're meeting people but everybody's staring at their phones. So we want to make sure that everything we add Kind of facilitates the the real world interaction. We don't want to, you know, go where most everybody else is going, and mm -hmm. you know, facilitating communications via the app and things like that. We want guys talking to people in real life. 
See, I, 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 I mean, I can think of so many places where I would love to have this tool from conferences to job fairs to, to all like anywhere where you want to try to seek out mm -hmm. individuals mm -hmm. with certain attributes or even I mean I, I go to events and I'm looking at okay who is the geeks in the crowd that I have something in common with and I could quickly make that connection and, and carry on a conversation versus maybe someone that <coughs> is huge into baseball which is not a huge interest of mine uh, you're describing our, our main problem right now you know you know we <laughs> yeah. have something good we're really trying to slim down and you know get each mark get one at a time um mm -hmm. we've had you know a lot of feedback a lot of feature requests for you know everything that people want to use for business for social and everything so you know we want to get the social side um attacked first and make sure we're getting our user base and then you know as soon as we Establish that you can bet that we're gonna pull out the you know the next version next app for the next uh, niche. Very cool, very very cool. And, and I like because you know the initial impression like I was trying to remember like didn't the highlight do something and, and 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 one thing you were talking about like was was how you know any of these apps is to look for somebody in your area are using geotagging are like a mile radius which isn't yeah. practical. Right. And I remember like something like highlight would just just suck down your battery so bad was one of the biggest problems with it. Yeah. So that's actually one of the huge advantages we're, we're leveraging here is uh, the Bluetooth low energy, which just came out here in the past two or three years uh, with the libraries on both iOS and Android devices. Uh, so Bluetooth low energy uses I, I see negligible battery difference when I have it on, on my phone. And it really we had taken advantage of the fact that Bluetooth is terrible with going through stuff like walls. So really the people that you see are the people that are actually in the room with you, whereas geotagging or something could be, you know, even try to put down a very small radius and it's going to be people, you know, halfway across the street in a building that you'll never interact with or ever never run into. Right, right, especially in a city. That's just, the, 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 yeah, that's that, that, that works a lot better. Excellent. So, so uh, what did you say? You're at a, at a beta uh, uh, state now. Um, like, what what's your kind of uh, outlook here? Like, when can people, you know, hop in on a beta, or or even may maybe hopefully see it, uh, you know, to play around with it themselves? Yeah, we actually um, we we're just trying to go through the app store. Um, we're, we're doing a, a quick version too. They they had a small problem with our first version, um, mm -hmm. so we're releasing back into there. Mostly my fault <laughs> on Chase's coding there, <laughs> but um, we are releasing to uh, events here. We're going to roll out um, on an event basis. Uh, we have to have an invite code and things on once we are in the app store. But um, we have a lot of events lined up where people are going to get a special code where they'll be able to really, you know, nice. be the first uh, large scale testers on the app um, right away. And we'll take that feedback and you know, kind of add it in the features that people really need and do updates from there. Nice. And this is going to be iPhone first, I take it. Yeah, it's yeah. iPhone first, and um, so actually, if you want to go sign up for some of our betas, you can go to our Facebook page, and uh, we're going to be posting a link there. Uh, we've already posted one. We'll, we'll post it again to sign up to actually for our beta list, and we actually have an event tomorrow, uh, 9 o'clock p.m. down at Cativo uh, in Lawrenceville. Uh, we're going to be you know, getting people to, to use the event in, uh, in the bar there, uh, you know, see a social setting, and there's karaoke and stuff, so hopefully it'll be a nice, good time for everyone to... Uh, Test this out. Give us some good feedback. Let us hear from you guys. So yeah, please come and show up yep. if you're interested. We're doing trivia into you know some testing into karaoke, and uh, we'll be giving out a fifty dollar gift card to one of the people that you know submits feedback to us, so we can keep improving and you know work on speed here. Nice, nice. very cool. I like that. I, I, I like these. Uh, um, 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 inter interaction assistance. You know, mm -hmm. uh, we, we, we've had discussions <laughs> in the past few weeks about on some of the other shows that we've been doing about you know you, you know social media and the technology taking the place of our interactions. But I like that it assists some of us that do have a problem with something like that. You know, the the, the other thing is, that, and just as my own personal opinion, going looking at PodCamp and being able to know that someone's Twitter handle, right? Because so many people on Twitter, you don't know. Who they are from their from their icon or their avatar, um, but it's like if you can if if in your app you could put a face to a name and a, more importantly for me a Twitter handle, mm -hmm. 
that Ooh. would bridge that gap. Please have to who please, is who. Please, if I can make a feature request, please <laughs> yeah. have something where somebody can't put their dog as their face in your application because that kills me on Facebook. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, pretty soon. We're definitely looking into that. <laughs> excellent, excellent. Check it out. Uh, who you Inc. That's W H O Y U Inc. dot com. If you want to check that out, they're on Facebook, they're on uh, 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 Twitter as well. And I'll be interested to keep an eye out and see what you guys are uh, uh, doing with this as it comes out. So, awesome. Uh, so, if you guys want to hang out, we're going to be talking some more awesome things and some tech news, all right? Can't yes, wait. Great. All right. So, let's get into some awesome, awesome news. I hope I didn't steal yours here. Uh, yeah, you did. It's okay. I, I mean, I, I'm, sorry. There, I'm sorry. There's something to be said for being the first one into the dock. <laughs> <laughs> <It's> just, something <laughs> to be be the guy that creates the doc and he, so he gets to put this in here and um but no uh so so pebble you know you were the early guy on this i i got to inherit mm-hmm. it from you uh i still need to check up on how you're doing with the google class um but we'll do that some other time but this mm-hmm. is the big news of the day pebble had a big announcement this morning here on tuesday february 24th uh they announced a new pebble and it's been three years Right, probably right around there. I think it's from, like from the yeah from the probably the sh- first shipping of the Kickstarter. Right, right. And it has it. They, they had steel. This is an original, mm-hmm. right? Was this from a Kickstarter? That is yes. That is from. Yeah, that is from. I'm ninety nine percent sure that's from the okay. Kickstarter. You'd have to look on the box. <laughs> I think it's down here actually. Um, <laughs> I just have a tech. Either that or it was right after. Here. It was right after. I don't think it was the early Kickstarter, but it was one of the later. The later iteration. So I don't know. I don't think that's the one that's engraved with Kickstarter first X amount. But right, right. Yeah. Um, but so it's interesting. So they announced a new one. Um, it's the Pebble Time. It's going to be a color screen, not touch screen yet. Um, but there's a few other features they've added on to this. And uh, they're going again through Kickstarter. Um, $500,000 goal. They're, of course, obliterating it with over $6 million in, in stuff. So, so basically, they're basically using Kickstarter... And they say going back to Kickstarter, where they where they started it all, as a sort of de facto pre-order system. The, the device looks looks stunning. I I like the new charge port on the back. Okay, um, I think that's a good idea. I think it almost one one of the things, and it'll be interesting to see how they actually clip that on. I didn't see. I, I saw a picture of the port, but not of the charge cord i wish they went to a micro usb personally i I think that would have been it would have made sense but i guess i'm guessing the issue is where to put that that charge port Mm -hmm. and i'm guessing it added the thickness Mm -hmm. um the the picture's beautiful display for for e-ink and and yet again seven days of battery life color e-ink display um it seems like it's a little bigger they're claiming it's it's thinner. Okay. I read I read an article and let me see if I can find it real quick. They shaved twenty percent skinnier. Maybe that doesn't mean thinner. Um, I like the I like the fact that they kept the curve to the wrist in there. Mm-hmm. Um, the bezel looks a little different to me, and I think it's because they put hold yours up for a second. Yeah, so so, so they kind of. <laughs> do you want me to take this off? No, for, no, no. For they, demonstration? they they kind of. So they kind of. If you, when you look at the picture, it surprised me. It's like they have this outer bezel that's colored, and then they have an inner bezel that's that's like this black ring. Mm-hmm. And then they have versus this is just right. Hold on, make sure it's not an important message on there. <laughs> there we go. But uh, yeah, it's it's so this is pretty flat color to screen, right? Right. And uh, yeah, they they have a little more to it, you know. Um, I like it. I I like how the the devices they match the the colors of the buttons to the color of the band in the back. Mm-hmm. I thought that I, the device looks sleek. Mm-hmm. Um, I, yet still, I mean, it still looks. It's not Apple sleek, but it looks still kind of. I want to say toy y, you know, plastic y uh, to a bit. And you, you know, there's going to be like a steel version of this shortly afterwards that'll be a little fancier, a little more expensive. Um, coming in at 200 bucks. Um, it's they, 200 bucks, like. It's not. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's not $5 million Apple 24 karat gold 
ridiculousness. Um, they're really pushing that the, a lot of the fitness features are in this. Um, they have a microphone so you can do quick messages like if you got a call or something. Um, and their interface was interesting too. Their thing, their deal was um, we wanted our interface to be like a watch, which is the most Johnny Ives thing I think I've heard Pebble <laughs> say yet, right? And they go into this and it's actually a timeline. You actually go through a timeline of, you know, when you checked in your, your, your exercise, when you checked in this, I'm going to try to pull up a screen here. I know it's coming up in this video. Um, but it's a, it seems like a, here's a little visual if you guys are on the video, uh, of how that goes. So like it goes to the meetings you can go back in time to see when like messages came in, when, when, when things were, um, you know, when a movie date is going to be, you know, they're showing or, or an email that came in 40 minutes ago, it's showing right. Um, or a game coming up and the score, uh, it's, it's really slick and definitely something that we haven't seen on Pebble. Now I know, I think this is this update. A version of this is going to come to our current pebbles is, is i think a version of the operating system is going to come to the the pebble and i for probably some of the new sdk and software type stuff mm -hmm. um and this is uses bluetooth le so it'd be interesting if if, if who you could tie into <laughs> everyone in the room with a, a pebble but um <laughs> that being said oh, we're looking at all the options for sure <laughs> all devices <laughs> um leverage <clears throat> one one of the things that they've always done a good job with is being cr they're, they're one of the only cross platform watches, right? So to me, that's that's an instant win. I don't know necessarily what the Domino's app is going to bring them, um, but who knows? Um, they're, they're, what are you talking about? Domino's integration. Are you talking about the Domino's Pizza yeah. app? Yeah, really? It's a, it's on it's a logo. I understand. I can get the Weather Channel, okay. and, and ESPN and nothing new and Pandora. Yeah, um, makes sense. But sometimes you just got to order pizza like James Bond. <laughs> <laughs> maybe maybe that's what they're using. They're using the mic with oh, the new. If I'm walking around app. here, because you we, like I, I go and order the pizza from Slice like around like you know a little bit before five o'clock here while I'm setting up the studio. If I just have to be like, hey, uh, Slice on Broadway, bring it, you know, that would be tremendous. <laughs> that, would be, um, that would be amazing. Um, but no, yeah, it's kind of bringing it to that um, kind of James Bondy thing. Uh, what do you guys think? I mean, I know you probably see a lot of crazy products coming up around the Alpha Lab <laughs> for, for certain. Right, right. I mean, I know I've been waiting for for the finally, you know, the right smart uh, watch where they, they figured out all the kinks um, mm -hmm. with, you know, now that phones are getting bigger and bigger, it's it's silly to have to take out my phone to do these little things. And I look, you know, I have the note for it almost looks uh, weird talking on it without, <laughs> without headphones. So, you know, the more I can do the quick items with my watch and see the actual, you know, reminders with Google now and everything, I, that'll be the, you know, key addition to all the tech that I use, keep mm -hmm. me on time for everything. So what do you think, Chase? I'd like to see more apps come out for it. Um, I think with Pebble doing this new thing and Apple coming out with their watch, I think it's going to start happening. I'd like to see something, uh, you know, even, even you know, I'm obviously selfishly looking at my app and thinking of, you know, maybe I can just swipe through profiles real easily on my watch and that'd be kind of cool. But uh, I don't know. I, I'm not much of a hardware guy, but I just see, like, it's interesting to see that the smartwatch is kind of starting to pick up a lot more and more. And and Pebble, you know, really started a lot of it, which is which is pretty awesome. And it's, I think one of the more interesting things is that they're doing Kickstarter again, which really that's, shows that's you. That's what I was going to say. <laughs> so what is that trend now? What does that mean? <laughs> well, yeah. Well, I mean, hardware uh, companies just do so well on sort of because they have like a product they can actually give the users. You know, like Fitbit or like Pebble, they have like really nice things that you can actually get, whereas software can't really do that quite as well. Certainly. And one of the things that, and I didn't, I, I didn't get to read fully through it, but one of the things they did too was with their app menu. Mm -hmm. um, it has, it, it uses the present and future. So, and one of the things they were saying is, is after you get so many apps on the Pebble, scrolling through is a little cumbersome if after you get so many apps on the device. Um, it sounds like they're trying to solve for that so you can scroll back to the past to see what you missed and then as for the present that's basically where the new app menu resides mm -hmm. so you can always get so up is going to be through your past timeline and then down is going to be through your app listing seems it makes sense yeah you know mm -hmm. it, it feels like a kind of equivalent of oh maybe not 
actually, I kind of wish my notification would do that on the iPhone. Mm-hmm. That it was actually in like a timed order and not so much grouped up, you know. I but totally then. agree. <laughs> I, I, two things, a timed order for notifications and a clear all button. Uh, next version. <laughs> They're going to do a lot of cleanup in next version, I'm yeah. sure. But uh, very excited to see it's that. Go behind the Android, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The, the clear all, yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That, oh, that's that's awesome on my Android because I don't <laughs> pick up my tablet that often. And it's just obliterated with, with notifications. I'm like, ah, goodbye. I check them on everything <laughs> else that I use. So, um, but awesome. So, uh, it'll be interesting to see what happens with the Pebble Watch. I'm interested. I'm, I'm, I'm interested. I'm more I'm interested. I'm seriously more interested. Like, this seems more practical than the Apple Watch. And I'm sorry. They, they hit it every time out of the park with battery life. Yeah. There is, there's, Again, there's there's no watch that mm-hmm. hits a seven day battery life, and there's no watch or there's a handful, but none like this that are cross platform. Right, right. I mean, and they just uh, added support for uh, Android Wear. Mm-hmm. So if you're into that, not that it looks pretty, like I like Android Wear because it looks <laughs> nice on my wrist. You know, um, I haven't seen one in person though, but 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 you know, it, it just you know seems like a really cool you know smooth device you know so this is too where i feel like apple needs to do something quick Mm -hmm. because we haven't heard anything come out of them since what new ipads in the in the fall that's the last thing we really heard it's gotta be it's gotta be soon i i think they're gonna finally announce apple watch before the end of march i would i think i think that's supposed to be available in april i think well yeah it is so (laughs) But, you know, they'll pop that up. We'll learn in a week, mm-hmm. and then it'll be uh, the day after it'll be available. So, but I don't know. I, I'm, I'm seriously more interested in getting this than, than unless they, they're they curing cancer with that Apple Watch. I don't, I don't think 350 is going to do it for me. <laughs> it's the price, too. It really is the price. I, I, I just I just feel weird paying that much money for something that goes on my wrist at this point. Even yeah. yeah. Well, especially when the phone prices are always going up. So now you're, you know, talking a thousand dollars to have. Exactly, and it's 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 new iPhone year for me. So yeah. I have to really consider <laughs> that, you know. Um, and now I'm kind of oh, yeah. itching. Oh, maybe I should get a new iPad, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I learned something interesting, and I'll cover it um, in one of the future topics that we have with the Astro Pad, and I put one mm-hmm. in there for Forge. Um, the iPad Two is not all it's cracked up to be i would actually depending on what you're doing other than the fingerprint sensor yeah and, and we'll get to that in a we're minute. talking about the air too yeah the air too because mm-hmm. yeah not the ipad too oh, sorry. Well, actually quick tip on that you know gazelle sells um uh certified certified refurbish. like new refurbished yeah. stuff from whatever what everybody's been sending into it and and really frankly an ipad you don't have to get the new one Mm-mm. i i'm i'm still with that three that we in our google glass super trade that we did um i'm getting so much use out of the three you mm-hmm. know i the only thing i run into is i'm the version off from doing airdrop uh, for bluetooth okay. <laughs> well and here's a question for you guys since you guys are bluetooth low energy guys I have one Bluetooth headset that does Bluetooth LE, and it doesn't seem to get much better battery life. Why aren't there more Bluetooth headsets, both potentially, or and maybe I'm wrong, um, that are either your just stereo headphones that give you audio, and that's great, or uh, like the Bluetooth headsets like we, we that I know of that that also is the single earbud and it's it's kind of let you just talk on the phone or whatnot i'm not seeing huge advancements with bluetooth le and battery life in those devices well i think one of the big reasons there is is that bluetooth le gets you uh better battery life but lower data rates so okay. if you're really doing audio over your bluetooth sometimes the, lo- the le doesn't actually get you those data rates you need to really do the streaming okay cool good to know Awesome. So, Chilla, you have an Internet of Things starter kit for yours. Because, <laughs> yeah, someone, someone took the pebble. I'm sorry. Oh, that's I'm okay. sorry. I like it when you get creative because <laughs> stuff like this comes up, though. Um, so mine is, the, and it's interesting, the price point for this, but not, let me introduce it real quick. So IBM has teamed up with ARM, the British uh, chip processor, um, and 
they have created an Internet of Things starter kit. Hmm. It's a two-piece board kit. Um, kind of reminds me of, of, a, of a Raspberry Pi in, in sort of a way. Um, in the fact that it has the, the main board has an additional port on it that allows you to connect another board to it. Um, has the, the interesting thing, and I didn't see it in here, is it's not Wi-Fi. There's no Wi-Fi on it. It has to connect. It's an Ethernet port. An right? Ethernet port, which surprised me, but it kind of out of the gate with the with the with the I don't know what you would call it daughter board, sister board, whatever. Um, it has rotating dimmer switches, a thermometer, motion sensors, small joystick, um, LED light that can show three different colors, um, and the the device is really. From from what I'm seeing, looks extremely small. Um, so I, I'm interested to see where people take this. The difference being is the starter kit price, and and they're saying that the price is yet to be set, but will be somewhere between fifty dollars and two hundred dollars. Oh jeez, <laughs> which to me is Pretty like great. yeah. But it, it'll be interesting to see what companies can take this and build on top of it like a nest thermostat or because because the interesting thing i thought is it has two rotating dimmer switches mm -hmm. so it unfortunately has to be plugged in via rj45 right now but it'll be interesting like i said it'll be interesting to see what people come up with from hey i have this crazy idea let's automate my refrigerator or do something of that nature so is this for is this something that I would get and put in my refrigerator or is this something that I would get and, and start trying to, if I'm developing a product, I think it's more if you're developing a product or, or maker stuff, or makers type stuff. Yeah. Okay. So it's going to, and that's where I think I could jumpstart a lot of those maker stuff instead of the maker people having to create this board and create this the firmware the to go on to it. Start it, with. It, it. It gets you the hardware real quick. Uh, much like uh, Raspberry Pi would probably do the same because, like, I put this thing here and I attach it to this drone or whatever mm -hmm. the heck you're using, and and you have a starter. You know, you you have the chips, you have the you have the silicon ready to go, right? <clears throat> so. Yeah, I hope they stay towards the the low end price point of that. Otherwise, you know, that's where all those products get their leverage from. Is all these people that you know didn't have access to this now have this really easy way to you know innovate and build these new gadgets that people haven't seen before. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, kids oh, need to be cheap to really leverage that. <laughs> right, uh, kids and tinkerers, right? And I think it has a USB port on it and, mm -hmm. and some other some other features. Um, it'd be interesting at this price point, and I'm sure you could do this with a Raspberry Pi too. But it, we always talk about here, right? Trying to get as many cameras around the studio and things like that. Let's just say at the fifty dollar price point, you could create something that was maybe even powered over ethernet mm -hmm. and then have it plugged the camera plugged into it and it's a remote camera right right I mean, yeah yeah I mean, that'd be good because i know these this the software does like ip cameras mm -hmm. for instance and just have something to kind of add on and and so we don't have to buy the expensive ip because i think they get pretty pricely like yeah. this plus a regular webcam could, could get interesting too so um yeah uh it, Cool to see a lot of this stuff coming up. I'm not going to be buying one, mm -hmm. but all the tinkerers this out is, there should definitely... This is for people a lot smarter yeah. than me. Well, and I look at it as it's for people that are looking to build that next hardware type device. Right, right. Right. Cool, cool. Um, so go check that out. It is, so this is... They, they have a site or anything for this? Is the, what What's the official it, name? Is it just like a the Internet of Things starter kit? Like what are... It's the Embed IoT... That's something people will remember. <laughs> Mbed <laughs> IoT I, starter kit. IBM not as good at self marketing <laughs> as Raspberry Pi apparently. So, um, but we got the article over here, uh, BBC.com. You can look it up over there. So, I'd be um, really interested to see the price points between that and an Arduino that gets those same sensors built on top of it too. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The thing that'd be very interesting is is how is the price to actually compare? Because you can get Arduino super cheap, and you get those real those add-ons pretty cheap as well. Yeah, certainly. 
All right, let's take a quick break, and we'll get some new awesome news stories of the week. Um, of course, uh, our friends providing uh, pizza again, people in the studio, like Chilla here. We, we're having a new regular coming in over on uh, the Rambling Movie Minute at that ramblingreview.com. Uh, of course, Slice on Broadway, a, uh, a supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with a great pizza. Um, it's been uh, pretty fantastic, our relationship with them over the year. Uh, that we've been doing this. Uh, we'll have some more inventive uh, ad campaigns since we can't put a logo in front of our videos. Thanks, YouTube. <laughs> Thanks. That's a not awesome story of the week. Um, so, but still, you we're got at least one new uh, customer. I got to get over there after hearing about it. So there you go. Hard. Come on over to Beachview, right along Tricks. You can take the T if you happen to be downtown or on the north side. Straight. It's if you're if you're at Heinz Field or PNC Park, and you want some good pizza, don't stop off whatever bar food they have down there on the north side. Get get your butt on that train. It's been like a two fifty. Get out here. Hop off when you see Slice on Broadway right on uh, the tracks here in the Beachview area in the South Hills of Pittsburgh. Or if you want to drop down to Carnegie, PA, or down on Main Street, there as well. Uh, these guys are obs- abs- abnormally obsessed with making good pizza. I think I got that right tonight. Um, and stuff's from scratch, and you can tell. It's a very, very awesome stuff. We just get a pepperoni pizza here. They have gourmet pizza. Slaughterhouse 5. Slaughterhouse 5 is Slaughterhouse 5 is deadly, man. Deadly. I recommend the Gonzo. Anything you see on as a sub, little secret. Anything you see as a sub, they can turn into a, c- a pizza. And the Gonzo is tremendous. Um, but we have we haven't had our our, our slice pig out nights like no, we, we used haven't. to in a long time. We're over over we overdue for that. So we would just fill the place and just order a bunch of gourmet pizzas and just go to go. town. Go hog wild on everything. So go check them out, sliceonbroadway.com. Follow them on Twitter, slice, pga underscore slice, uh, pgh underscore slice, and uh, slice on Broadway on Facebook and uh, Instagram, and let them know that you heard about them on the Awesome Cast. So getting into the stories of the night. Um, so so as I mentioned before, I've been getting into Snapchat a good bit lately, but. I'm really glad that uh, uh, Snapchat has stepped up and is telling the teen users, no nudes. There is a (laughs) safety section now. Oh, no, I don't want to like you on Facebook, Snapchat. That seems like the opposite of the point. Um, But they have they have a, a, a Snapchat safety center now on their site. Um, aimed according to uh, Fusion.net uh, to aim at flummoxed parents and teachers who worry kids could ruin their lives by, say, snapping a photo of sex in a football stadium. Who's doing that? Is this something that's <laughs> happening on Snapchat? <laughs> kids these days. Um, but you can that's check good. out the six-page parents' guide to Snapchat and add a, a add a reminder to check out Snapchat's community guidelines, which say quite explicitly. Don't send nude photos, y'all. <laughs> where is Snapchat? Yeah, I was say, where, are they in the South? Are they in Tennessee? What's happening here? Um, <laughs> do you guys uh, use Snapchat at all? Um, <laughs> you know, it's actually funny. I uh, I deleted Snapchat from my phone today. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I was I was actually doing some research on them, and uh, you know, they're they're now saying they have about two hundred million users, mm-hmm. and uh, their their target market is. 13 to 23 year olds and i just felt a little bit too old to be doing that. <laughs> yeah you see that 13 <laughs> draws concerns when you realize what you know the main marketing message was of, of it earlier mm-hmm. back in the day when it was just traveling word of mouth <laughs> well they're talking about in the article even like the picture on itunes um i think they have it here uh one of the early i think it's still at it, it, it the screenshot is of uh of supposedly nude girls over the uh, 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 menu on here. I, I can't bring it up right, but um, but you get the yeah. idea. Like, 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 there's a little bit of like, yeah, this is what this is really for, guys. But, I mean, now we have Katie Couric, not naked now, on uh, on the <laughs> Yahoo News portion and Discover, you know, um, which, you know, you get into Discover, and I just feel like, like, well, this isn't this what Flipboard is for? You know, this mm-hmm. kind of thing? You know, if, if I really want Katie Couric to tell me the news in under 10 seconds, you know, which is... Who's doing that in the first place, right? Um, but mm-hmm. I, I'm really liking it for some some of the kind of fun storytelling aspects people are doing. Um, but other than that, yeah, I don't. 
It, 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 you know, this needs to happen. I've been talking on this show and in other ones about how parents need to get educated. Oh, I totally and agree. and and the kids need to get educated, and this needs to be mm-hmm. part of it. And you're, you're not gonna stop the kids from doing <laughs> stuff. Let's Excuse be me. honest. Oh. The, the one yeah. thing the, the one thing that surprises me is parents don't get more educated. And it's no. almost like they can't be bothered to the point where they just hand their kids this device just to keep them quiet. And then mm-hmm. they wonder why bad things happen. Mm-hmm. Um, that's my own personal opinion on that. That's not a... Uh, well, well, a few parents make the wrong decision and now you have to go with the crowd, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Everybody else has them. You can get mm-hmm. your kid or they're, they're going to look like the one that you know yeah. doesn't have access to anything. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, it's interesting, and, and I think Facebook has, I think, kind of done something similar. They've had a little more education going on. Since they're so big, they kind of mm-hmm. have to at this point. Um, Twitter has been admittedly, you know, they mentioned with trolls and everything, how they're behind the times. Yeah. So, I don't know. It, you know, this, this needs to happen, and it's good to see the companies, uh, some of them actually taking taking on. Well, here's a here's something that's going to be safe for your kid when we were, we were talking about last week about when you're going to hand hand. Uh, Hand your kid the the tablet, yeah. right, Jilla? And, and this week, it's like they were listening to us, right? Well, and, and I haven't downloaded this app yet, but I'm I'm actually interested to see. Cause... Yeah, I wanted to poke around a little bit beforehand <laughs> <laughs> myself. So it's YouTube Kids is the thing. Um, so it's I, I imagine this is like a you know we have our Netflix Kids, you know, where it's all like here's your 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 Batman's and your Bugs Bunny cartoons or whatever, and and it's something uh, pretty pretty friendly. Um, there was I was listening to um, uh, Court Killers and Brian Brushwood on there. He does the show Scam School, mm-hmm. which is them at a bar doing magic and tricks, basically, right? But it's pretty Ooh. educational. Mm-hmm. It shows up in this app. The Bill Nye the Science guys that are not official show up in this app. So they had a kind of a discussion about like the copyrights and what they need to do with it. But generally, uh, I think they're mostly just kind of looking for explicit stuff and kind of uh, probably, you know, boxing that stuff out. And it looks like, you know, it, it's very suggestive of like, hey, here's the Sesame Street. Um, but I guess you've got to wonder to what point are, are, are kids of a certain age, you know, not really going to go in and search. But I, but I feel like just from that picture, and this is why I wanted to play with it, I heard two things. Well... I saw one thing and heard another. From that picture you had up, the UI looks very kid-driven. Like a a small child could grasp how to use this app, um, which mm-hmm. I think is the prime issue in handing your kid your device or any kid a device is can they actually use it or are they just going to swipe left to right and... and tap at the screen until it just does something. I feel like that app looks good and will be kid friendly. And I heard there's something within the app as well that it has some kind of parental controls or something. Um, I'm not a hundred percent sure what that is. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if it's how you get out of the app or something like that. And that's one of the other things I've actually been reading up on is both from an Android perspective as well as an, an iOS perspective, how to use guided access and, and screen locking and things to get the apps kind of locked in or to hide certain apps. Mm-hmm. Android, it's rough because it, 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 a lot of times it depends, well, are you on a Samsung device or on you, or are you on basic Android? Is it an HTC, whatever? Um, depending on what UI overlays they put on and some of the additional capabilities as well as what agreements they've made with other companies um, for what applications stay on the device and come preloaded and can't be removed. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, I don't know. I, the, the, the app looks very impressive. Yep. And very, you know, very big buttoned up. We're looking mm-hmm. at this is apparently the iPhone version here. Uh, in particular, uh, and uh, I guess we can pull up the iPad as well. And uh, yeah, yeah, big buttons. Everything's kind of uh, pretty open there. I mean, it looks like looks like you don't actually watch full screen though. Um, and I guess it does actually. From what they were saying on the other cast I was listening to, it does kind of lock you into that landscape mode too. Mm-hmm. So they're, mm-hmm. you know, it's a video. Yeah, it's a video. It makes sense. So um, but- yeah, that was kind of the first thing that made me curious. Is you know, talking about Android. You know, Samsung I think has their own you know kids mode that comes with all the new devices, so that you can hand your phone over, or, um, your tablet over to Samsung and have that mode in there. So if there's apps that will work with that, that'll probably be a good feed into them. Mm-hmm. And one of the things is, and I can't figure, maybe 
I think it's only on the newer Samsung devices that run 4.4 or higher. Because I have an older one that's, I think, 4.1.2. And I, I can't, at least I can't, I'm not smart enough, I guess, to figure out how to put it in kids <laughs> mode. <laughs> and that's the problem, right? <laughs> only the geek parents will actually maybe protect their kids from the tech stuff. And that's not what we're worried about. You haven't made it easy enough, right? When I, and I found like... It, on 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 that device on the on the device I have there's there's a if you go into the apps listing there's a button in the upper right hand corner that lets you hide apps from the app listing but then to view mm-hmm. them all you have to do is go up there and say view hidden apps um, so that's to me not that great of a solution mm-hmm. um, but yeah I am looking at that stuff since I have a ten month old at home. We do like a. Yeah, I use the hide apps just to get rid of clutter. <laughs> there's, <laughs> there's so many that I want to use for different times. So mm-hmm. the ones I don't take advantage of right away, just kind of remove them from the screen. Well, the thing that surprised me was like the the one of the device. I, I have Kindle on like five other devices. I'm like, I don't need it on this, and it's mm. you can't remove it. There's no. Uh, oh, the no, stop. <laughs> yeah, that come preloaded. Yeah, the, the the Samsung. I have a Galaxy Tab, an old oh, old Galaxy Tab. Um, and and they they preloaded a bunch of software on it, and it's like okay, it's not a big deal for space, right? I mean, it's Kindle, it's like two meg because there's no books loaded into it. I don't even have it configured for my account, but it's like, why can't I just get this off the screen? Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, at least it's not Lenovo. And, and hey, I, by the yeah. way, look at my <laughs> Lenovo tower. I'm running this software on over here that I need to still bug fix. Jeez, my did it have it on it? Uh, no, I haven't looked yet, but I bought this uh, about a year ago, so I imagine it's in there. Uh, my, my mother-in-law has a Lenovo laptop as well. I'm like, here's... And we just lost everybody, apparently. Um, you call her. We'll see what's happening there. Um, but, Google's upgrading Hangouts. Uh, yeah, Google's upgrading <laughs> Hangouts right now in the middle of our show, apparently. It's reloading. Whatever happened, it's reloading. So thank you, thank you, Google, for... Uh, rebooting our entire hangout system while we're going here um at least it's not skype uh it looks like you guys are back <laughs> um so I, I think we're getting them back so um so we'll move on while we're kind of poking at this a little bit um you with us chase i think you're on mute oh you know what he's not getting video back that's my fault so, okay, uh, and I muted. That's why they can't hear me. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Google, for that. Um, okay, looks like I'm back. <laughs> okay, a little bit of a... Yeah, you know, it looks like it was an error on our side because it told me um, that uh, Google experienced an error and just, like, kicked both of you guys and brought you right back. Or, or okay. maybe I got kicked, I don't know. <laughs> so... Um, the internet. Uh, anyways, uh, it looks like we got you guys back here. So um, the next one. So this is this from uh, this is going to sound familiar to you, right? Are you thinking the same thing I am? Uh, ex- yes. Go ahead. So we had Jim Loke, former KDKA traffic guy, now doing great things and trying not to get hit by snow in Boston, right? Um, did you see the picture where he saw himself on the back of a taxi? No. <laughs> because it, they were playing the news bits in the, in the screen mm-hmm. in the taxi in Boston. And he was just like, hey, I know that guy. <laughs> um, but uh, he's doing great up there. But he talked about, and I can't remember the name of the app at the time, but it was one of those that grazes a little bit, like like that, oh, like that that the change in between, um, you know, uh, the, you know, you know, the round it up to the next dollar. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. And Acorn. it puts that into a, a savings account and it's an app that you can go check in on and, and what, play with the threshold and everything. This is a different one. This is a completely different one. I'm seeing according to the verge.com it's called digit. You can check out. Um, and according to them, it's an automatic savings account that opens uh, to a, the public today uh, for us accounts. Um, it lets you monitor your income spending habits and uh, will begin to, uh, 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 putting away a few dollars whenever it thinks you won't miss them. So this is more behavioral, not just like flat. I'm going to take you know round up to the next dollar and take that change out. It seems mm-hmm. um, the person uh, writing this article, uh, Casey Newton over at The Verge, says he's been using it for a month now and painlessly managed to save three hundred sixty dollars towards a trip he was planning to take over the summer. Um, it's, it's the best thing that happened to my personal finances in some time. Um, so I guess, I don't know. So I guess it's a behavior based kind of thing. Um, I'm curious about it. I mean, I was curious about the other one too. Uh, but, uh, maybe this one will be a little more widespread. 
for instance. I'm interested to see how they play because the, the one thing that made me a l- little nervous with the Acorn thing is you had to Acorn, go, thank you. Granite, you had to grant it access to your bank accounts. Like you had to provide your banks, you had to pr- provide your user ID and password for your bank. Mm-hmm. Which, which, not that uh, I don't know that that meant that made me nervous. Uh, I'd be interested to see is there a way that 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 won't happen. So how does this connect, I wonder? That I don't know. Yeah. And this is where, and I think it calls it out in this article, right? That the banks aren't doing this. And why? Why? Mm-hmm. The the bank's making money if you keep money in your account. Well, they kind of make a big thing on here about, <laughs> yeah, they, well, yeah, they make money if it's in your account, but they're saying about how the bank's really kind of like, you know, kind of... Uh, if you're the poor tax, you know, overdrafts mm-hmm. and such, you know, so um, there's not really much incentive for the middle savings kind of, you know, pushing it towards that. So, uh, I mean, I, the, the closest things I see to something like this is, like, well, the PNC has the the wallet, virtual wallet, virtual wallet kind of thing. Mm-hmm. At least that helps manage it a little better. It it's seems. more, it's, but it's not a, yeah, it, it helps, it helps you. It, to me, it's the first step that they talk about in this, that it, it kind of monitors and looks at where you're spending and where it could pick out money that you wouldn't necessarily miss. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't see anyone taking that next step. Like it's not, it's at least as far as I know, I don't think a virtual wallet recommends savings or automatically moves money around. Do you remember the acorn is, it was acorn its own account. Acorn was its own account with acorn. Okay. And this looks like it's doing something very similar. Digit is its own account. And it says uh, you have to have your bank information handy. So I think you're doing precisely the same thing that Acorn did with Digit. So I don't know. I'm really surprised they're not doing a software as a service for the banks, right? So provide this as a service for the banks and make your money that way for them. Well, then, right? Because, I, I mean, any bank that would do this for you, I feel like that's a huge competitive advantage. And, and why not make it where, like, it, it's built in, banks can build it into, like, touch pay, right? Right. So if I right. use TouchPay, obviously it's going back to my bank. Mm-hmm. Partner with Apple, and I know Google's working on some some. They have Google Wallet, and they're they're Samsung's trying to use Loop. Um, partner with them, so ev- just say every time you TouchPay or you whatever NFC. Kind of is like they're always incentives whenever they're trying to get everybody to use dig- uh, uh, debit cards, right? Over checks. Take it take it to that level, and and and. To your point, build it in as a as a software as a service, mm-hmm. but bind it with those types of capabilities. It gets people using a more secure payment method, and then also it, it's a, it's a differentiator. Be really tremendous to promote the chip and pin upgrades mm-hmm. that are coming this year, for instance. So, um, but uh, check that out. It's Digitit, and it's uh, digit.co if you want to go check that out and uh, see if it's for you so but yeah again you're gonna to have to connect your bank and i don't think it's going to solve the problem you have with acorn sorry all right i'm most curious in, in how sophisticated that uh you know that thing can predict you know when you want to save because we were just looking being in the app environment we were looking at how strange you know the different willingness people are to spend you know money like we've in stores and supermarkets and everything they have it down that you know if you put this product at this height and at the register, you can always hear somebody spend an extra three or four dollars, you know, mm-hmm. something they didn't need. <laughs> but you know, you go to an app, and as soon as that app is ninety nine cents, you know, it's such a huge barrier to everybody want to pay that <laughs> that one dollar that hey, they're probably you know leaving on the street somewhere I've, else. I've so. been really big on two dollar games lately. That have been fantastic. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. All those adventure <laughs> and uh, what was the other one? Uh, Wrestle Jump was the other one I bought last week. Um, I actually did a review on all those adventures today on uh, insertcointobegin.com if you want to check that out. Um, speaking of, actually, speaking of iPhone, uh, you know, this is somebody I encountered via, I think this was via the the, the Awesome Cast Twitter account. Um, somebody had just like kind of followed us or something. I kind of followed through to just check out, you know, who's who's doing what. And this this is completely this is not consumer. This is actually the app is on like iTunes preview. But the fact that this was happening, and I don't think you can even get this in America, like period. Um, so like uh, uh, Virtus One is the application. Um, and look at this, Chilla. They're using the iPhone with google cardboard and just developing it out themselves and now we can have our iphone with our google cardboard and 
and have your own experience. It looks like it's like a space shooter. Yeah, it's a space shooter. Yeah, it's a, uh, let's see, according to the application uh, uh, description here, it's a fast-paced, it's fast-paced shooting action, and that's all. Um, obviously, very, very <laughs> early. Um, if you want to find out what this is about, at Virtus1, uh, spelled out the number one, uh, over on Twitter, and, and he's got a link through there. This is weird. Can you do this, that you can just put a link to the preview on the App Store right in your description? Like, that seems like there should be a rule against that. Well, I think what it is is, you, if it's a preview, you can't download it. Hmm. I didn't try downloading this, but it's not. It's also ninety nine cents, or ninety nine pounds, or pence, or whatever the heck it is, wherever they are. So, but uh, but no, it was kind of really interesting to see somebody is developing something. Is that like euros? That. Euros? I don't I think there's euros. Somebody tells me what this insignia is right here. <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> that's that's euros. Okay. The, the pound is like an L type thing. Like pounds. Right? Like pounds. Like pounds. That makes sense. <laughs> I don't know why I didn't think about that. Um, but anyways, um, I think you wanted, you wanted to mention something along with this next story about Astropad, right? Yes. So you kick it off. Okay. And I will chime her in. So this is pretty cool. Um this is called AstroPad, and the headline to this is uh, this app turns your iPad into a sketchboard for your Mac. You know, and you know, I'm I really like kind of looking into like ways I can integrate with Photoshop and everything. Um, and uh, this is basically their their subline here on the Verge is the AstroPad lets your iPad stand in for an expensive Wac- Wacom tab. Wacom Wacom. Wacom. I, Wacom is it officially? I don't know. I have this. Uh, Malengo uh, uses these things, mm-hmm. and and we've had this conversation. It's the gift GIF thing. All yes. over with these guys, I, and I've never heard a any presentations to hear how they do them. Um, I'm still not used to the way Asus says their name. Asus, 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 Asus whatever. I like Asus myself. But anyways, A-S-U-S. that's not the point of this. Um, <laughs> so, so and they're actually showing here. They're using the iPad. It looks like alongside with um, Photoshop. From I can tell in the picture here, uh, but it, it, it it's called Astropad and it, it uh, allows you for use your iPad as a sketchboard that transfers over to the Mac. Uh, that means you can load up Photoshop, grab a stylus, start drawing on your iPad while using all the tools. That's awesome. That's so I don't need to go get a Surface if I'm already on the Mac. Um, but uh, I was interested in. I was thinking about playing around with this because there is a seven day. I think there was a seven day demo before mm-hmm. you really have to pay for it. Um, the one thing that also impresses me is that yet another app from X Apple engineers. <laughs> so, right. Isn't, uh, was duet or duet one of those other ones? Display was, and, and, and yeah, it's former all, Apple engineers. And it's all using that display driver too. Yeah. Like, like anybody you find it's like a, a mirroring Apple mirroring thought reflect. Uh, was another mm-hmm. one I'm using, uh, reflector reflector yeah i was just using that today to get uh, footage for that uh game review Mm -hmm. for all those adventure um but hey if anybody knows the ins and outs of how that works and that's probably the most complicated thing is get that display to port over one way or another from my ipad to mac or vice versa um they would do it and duet said did, told us on twitter that they're going to do a windows version as well of that one and that's the one if you guys were on that show that's the one where if you attach your ipad or iphone it will it, it can come up with the software in here as a second display um i i love it i love being the person that plugs it in and i have two displays at the coffee shop you know when well, in uh, the display in duet doesn't it allow you to touch on the interface to it then does. interact it does so so touch on the screen does turn into a mouse kind of press i think a little bit it gets really funky i mostly just stick with the mouse effect because I, I usually throw like tweet deck over there and and they'll just start selecting things and mm-hmm. you know i forget i forget that tweet deck is on the <laughs> mac and not a tweet deck or hootsuite on my ipad so i start doing touch motions and it just doesn't work but and the interesting so they they say this is powered by liquid what yeah so it's powered they created this platform i guess you could call it they named Ooh. it liquid and it's a it's a new technology that they made, and it's a breakthrough network technology that allows better rendering performance over wireless. Huh. So unlike Duet, yeah. where you have to be tethered and, and it's wired, their the, technology says. And, and to be honest, I still feel a slight slight lag with it. But they're saying this is like a third of the speed. 
Or it's, it's, it renders three times faster. Did you write? Mm. Yeah. Than, than AirPlay. Which I can't... I, why isn't why doesn't Apple have this? Right. I guess it's because the engineers yeah. left. <laughs> but I mean, they're saying 60 frames per second, GPU accelerated, color corrected to match the Mac, and it, it, it's all built into this liquid ARM technology. assembly code. So it's yeah. it's it's developed right for that iPad. The the one thing I'm interested to is, and and this is what I was going to get to. Um, so the Air Two, which has the best GPU, the best CPU, blah 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 blah. blah fast 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 apple redesigned the the touch panel in the air 2 really which has caused every stylus manufacturer's devices to like not to to pretty much not work properly so obviously they had to build their sdks so if you're familiar with and i've talked about like um android or however you pronounce it and paper all their different styluses, especially the ones that are Bluetooth enabled, mm-hmm. um, all of those require the the person to create A an SDK, and B then all the different companies that create an app has to build that SDK into their app. So obviously, Bamboo, which is uh, Wacom's app, Bamboo Paper, yeah, um, it works with their their stylus. Um, doesn't work and function properly, at least from what I'm reading, on the iPad Air 2. And I, I'm, I, and it actually caught me off guard because I went to pull out one of my Bluetooth styluses to take notes. And it started skipping, and it was giving me weird, like when I would write, like and lift, my, lift the stylus off the, the panel, it would give this weird tail swoosh type thing. Huh. And it was skippy. Um, it, so I'm wondering how this and, and they don't have anything on here that I see. Um, or maybe it's under support, but how well does it work with the Air 2? Hmm. Which if you're and, and the reason I bring that up is because did you see the price point on the app? No, I didn't. <laughs> I what what you're laughing. It's 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 like 50 bucks. Oh, jeez. <laughs> It's for uh, wow. from what I was reading, and, and I'm trying to look at their. And this, they have is, a try this is an interesting backdoor, and I think it. I think um, uh, Duet does this too, where you don't buy the app, you buy the software that goes on your computer. Yeah. Now they can do things like control. They don't give the cut to Apple, um, and I'm pretty sure this probably is. And they're usually more often than not, not through the App Store. Even on the Mac, yeah. Um, so it's forty, yeah, forty nine ninety nine to buy, or you can get a student educational discount. Wow, for I think tw- it's I think it's nineteen ninety nine, which even at the nineteen ninety nine is like almost twice the price. Yeah, I thought I. something was up when you said there's like a seven day trial. I'm like, wait, <laughs> what? What are you trialing? And if it's an app, because of the way they do it. Yeah. I don't know. What do you guys think of of, uh, of this real quick? This makes me think that it should be a, a Microsoft service commercial. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, yeah, on that kind of like the future, right? You guys were talking about Black Mirror earlier. That was the first thing that came to mind. <laughs> right. Exactly. All right. Well, on that note, um, we've got to roll out of here so the guys can talk about video games. Uh, mm-hmm. Once again, uh and I, I'm thinking a lot of the real stories, events coming up here in the area. Um, I, I don't have anything on my calendar, Chilla. I don't know if you're aware of next anything. For, is it, I think we'll have it for next Tuesday. Next Tuesday is the 3rd. Yes. Um, we will have more information on the Samsung Galaxy S6. which Ooh. will And next week is the World Mobility Ooh. Conference. So we'll have a lot of phone in Barcelona. News. That's, that's usually where like most of the non-Apple big phone news mm-hmm. tends to come from these days. So, And big. Microsoft did their own. Well, maybe Microsoft will announce because they haven't announced their next line of, of actual phones. I think high-end phones. Um, didn't they quietly release Windows 10 recently? Preview. For phone? It's and a they, preview it, for the phone. It's interesting. Preview. Yeah, so it's a preview of the OS for the phone. And they they're releasing by model. Yeah. And they're releasing to the low end models first. That's weird. So instead of going high end, they're like, okay, 
let's make sure that every, <laughs> everything works on the low end phones to make sure like everything's speedy and, and okay. it works well. Okay. And and get those people that's on like, those. That's old, like let's beta phones. this on the iPhone 4S before we move up. But it's like they like I was looking like one of the one of the main devices is like the forty dollar AT and T Go phone. That's like oh, wow. the the Nokia. So if you want to test this out, <laughs> yeah, you have it's really easy and cost effective if you want to go just want to play around a, a with Windows it. phone and the new Windows phone. That's 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 way better than the day when they uh, cut off everybody at the knees that bought like the first version of the mm-hmm. Windows phone. It's like yeah, you're not upgrading to the next one. Um, if you were like a point off, they were they were like like I think if it was like so if you have seven if you had a seven point one phone, you could have updated to eight or something like that. No, I think it was you could if you had a. S- Seven. If your if your phone came with seven one, it wasn't upgradable or something. And then yeah. if you were on seven five, it went to seven eight. I can't yeah. remember. Yeah, Cross would know. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> he, he had one of those. He's screaming phones. at his one. Oh, he had one that didn't. <laughs> he had he had none of the seven line could go to eight because right. they changed the chip right around in there. Right. But he his actually I think went went to seven eight. Something that didn't change from the old Windows Mobile days mm-hmm. when we were on the version fives and stuff. So we had a couple of those. Pocket was, PC. Just pocket PC. Right there, the compact behind me. I was showing that on Instagram today. <laughs> uh, people were going nuts for it because there is a, oh, what do they call out? Yes, there is a Palm Pilot on top of an NES system back here <laughs> next to a Tiger electronic pinball. So I have, a, I have a Palm Tungsten T. <laughs> at home it was like a I color remember, palm device i remember and, having a class when we were developing flash apps for a S- sony trio was mm-hmm. it that was like their version and that was that was the day oh, anyways on that point uh go check out everything going on uh sorgatron.com i'm doing a lot of stuff uh a lot of tech kind of based stuff i talked today about recycling your iphones and ipads around including uh where's it at oh this guy that we use for the teleprompter this is one way i'm using ipad ones great teleprompter you know for or whenever I need a quick teleprompter, and we move the other one to the kitchen. So, um, <laughs> you know, and uh, working out really well. Um, and of course, uh, the Oscast Mini Bites, we're doing a lot of stuff there. Um, and uh, insertcoinbegin.com, we're doing a lot of reviews. I'm actually porting a lot of the Mini Bites we're doing over there when it's uh, gaming related. Talk about Sony on Monday. Um, you can check us out. We're recorded live 6 30 p.m live.sorgatronmedia.com you can follow us on Twitter, Facebook, Google Plus, all this stuff. Awesomecast at sorgatronmedia.com is the uh, email address. And please subscribe to us. A big thanks to Mike Allen uh, at Mike Allen PR for doing the show notes and tweets all night. I see that we got the uh, I, I think we got the attention of Astropad tonight on Twitter. So uh, hello. How you doing? Uh, Chilla, you're at Chilla on the Twitters? Where can be found. There 24 by 7. And you guys, uh, the site is whoyouinc.com, right? Yep. All right. Yeah, uh, thanks for having us on. Appreciate it. Awesome, awesome. And we'll get that info. Send me some uh, details, and we'll send that uh, the event you guys are doing tomorrow uh, out uh, along with this. So uh, thank you guys for joining us. Go check out alphalab.org and all the really cool uh, stuff coming out there, coming out of there. Um, I mean, so what I follow, and I, we get to run the cool guys like this um so uh until next time uh, uh apologies anybody live i know the chat room is weird rumble chat apparently decided to drop everything to a one user limit and kill our chat room <laughs> so without <laughs> buying it um so i threw a really quick in there I, I i think it's one that was like you know the chat that pops up in the bottom for customer service i think mm-hmm. that's what it's meant for so right now if you go to sorgatronmedia.com i think there's a chat box under every page <laughs> So, like uh, on the bomb that just pops up over everything so we'll fix that we'll, we'll figure out a better that's what i could come up with in 10 minutes i think it's called iFly chat if you're interested in something like that <laughs> iflychat.com actually um that does not work for these shows <laughs> so i want an irc chat if anybody knows a good irc chat client or how to set one of those up I, a lot of the shows i listen to use that um and i'd love to you know kind of do something similar for what we do i haven't here. used irc since merc i haven't used irc since <laughs> Yeah, Mark, <laughs> Mark, and high school. Uh, yeah. Anyways, at that point, thank you, thank you guys for joining us. Uh, thank you to yep. our awesome chat room, awesome guests. You've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network.
Find out more at SorgatronMedia.com. You like professional wrestling? Want your discussions? No holds barred. Check out WrestlingMayhemShow.com for all the wrestling podcast flavor you can handle.